Hi, uh, uh, so in the last videos, we learned many integration techniques, right? But still, those integration techniques are not enough, meaning that there are so many functions that those integration techniques may not be applicable or we cannot apply those techniques or we cannot find the integral using those integration techniques. There are so many functions that we cannot find the integral manually, okay? So in such case, we use numerical method to find the integration techniques. Numerical method means, suppose I want to find the, uh, the area under this pink curve between A and B, right? The total area under that. So to find out that, if that integration techniques like integration by parts, substitution, trick substitution, so many other methods. If those methods does not work or are complicated, then what we do is we use the numerical method, meaning that we divide that into so many uh, stripes or the uh, rectangular region or the trapezoid. I would say, why did I say trapezoid? Is because one of the side is not equal to that because it is like slightly slanted. Another is when it's slightly slanted and so on. So we divide them into so many stripes with one side. Maybe if we if we approximate this curve that it is not straight line. The pink one is not straight line on the first rectangle, right? I should not say rectangle because this side is not equal to that side. But I'm approximating that area under that pink curve by the blue curve because I'm using a line segment there to approximate that line segment, okay? Similarly, on the, on the second one, I'm using that blue line segment to approximate the, the red curve, okay? So, and, so this is called trapezoidal rule, meaning that we are approximating the area under this section by a trapezoid, like a joining by a straight line and making a trapezoid, okay? So that is called trapezoidal rule. And, and we will consider another rule called Simpson rule. Simpson rule will consider a quadratic function to approximate that curve, okay? Like a quadratic function, like that, to approximate this curve. But we'll discuss that later, but for now, we want to talk about the trapezoidal rule. First of all, what is trapezoid? A trapezoid is a, a closed figure, okay? Closed a plane figure with two of the sides parallel to each other. Okay, so closed figure with two of the sides parallel to each other. So this is a trapezoid with two sides parallel. Okay, so to find out the area of this, what we do is we find the the distance between these parallel sides. That is, suppose that distance is h. Okay, h over two times p plus q, okay, the sum of the longer side and the shorter side, these two, okay, and then divide by two times the height, okay, that's what we do, okay, all right, so height times, so, so why do we do that is basically you can find it easily, so what the idea behind that is you can just join that, so you've got two triangle there, right, so you've got two triangle, right, so how do I find out the area of this triangle is? This is the height, one half. So basically the area of the upper triangle is one half. Ha base is that Q times altitude is that the height is H. Plus for the other one, it's the same thing, right? So how do I find out the height of that is basically that is the height of this, this triangle. So one half height times the base for that will be P, right? So times P because even though so that is one half h p plus q. That's how you find out. So so you may be curious why for this triangle, why the base is p. So this is how we find out the area of the triangle. Suppose you have a triangle like this. Okay. Suppose this is the base of that triangle. So how do I find out the area of this triangle? How do I find this area? Is one half height times the base. Okay. Hi, one half base times the altitude. So what is the altitude? Altitude is basically that height is the altitude of this triangle okay although we use the base as just this much the altitude is that part that height is all used as the altitude that's why we find out that form okay so this is the area of the trapezoid one half height times sum of the opposite sides sum of the parallel sides 
okay that's how we find out now to find the total area under this pink curve what we do is we find out the area of this trapezoid area of this trapezoid and continue that way and find the area of that last trapezoid and then sum them that's what we do okay so suppose we want to find out the area of this pink curve what i'm doing is so between a and b between x equals to a and x equals to b what i'm doing here is i am dividing the a b interval the interval a b into n equal parts equal parts okay so a, x0 is a suppose x0 is a and then x1 x2 x3 with n so what is the total length total length is b minus a is the total length correct and then how many we are making how many of them we are dividing is n so that will be the width of each of those or that the distance between x0 and x1 is b minus a over n and similarly distance between x1 and x2 is also b minus a over n and so on so let us denote this by delta x delta x i so all the delta x i are equal to b minus a over n because we divided the length b minus a into n equal parts so that is b minus a over n okay now so what is this first height it is f at x0 right or f at a that's the first height f at a what is the second height f at x1 what is the third height f at x2 and so on okay so let me ask you uh, what is the uh, area of the tr first trapezoid so the area of the first trapezoid is you can write this is the width this is that height right this is that height that is b minus a over b minus a over n times so sum of this side and that side right? what do you get that is it f at x0 plus f at x1 you see that that's the area of the first trapezoid similarly what is the area of the second trapezoid it is again the same thing b minus a over n times f at x1 that that side plus f at x2 plus f at x2 you see that f of x1 is repeated see if you continue that way if you continue that way what is the area of the last trapezoid then it will be b minus a over n times f at x n minus n minus 1 okay and then plus f at x n that is same as f at uh, uh, f at b you see that this is what you get now if you add all the area so the total area let me use different color for that so the total area area is approximately equal to no i'm not writing equal to approximately equal to we are using the approximation by using the trapezoid for each of the stripe as a trapezoid okay is equals to so you, you will be adding all these okay so what do you get the, all of them have the b minus a over b minus a over n as the common so what do you get f of x0 f of x0 plus you see that f of x1 plus f of x1 you will get 2f of x1 plus 2f of x2 because you will get f of x2 another will be f of x2 here right and then plus and continue 2f of x n minus 1 that will be this one will be the you, you know that this this side will be used for to find out the area of that and area of that both that's why we will have to and then the last one will not be repeated f of x n you see that that's what it looks like okay so if you simplify that what do you get let me let me do that okay so what I'm going to do here is B, B minus A over N oh by the way I, I forgot to write divide by 2 you see that the the the, the formula is H is that and plus P plus Q over 2 right that's divide by 2 let me write down that divide by 2 here divide by 2 divide by 2 and divide by 2 that's the area of each of those trapezoid right so I am taking 2 also 2 out what do I get I get 2 n there okay now next what I'm going to do is I am going to distribute this to all those so this is what I get equals to so I'm writing b minus a over 2 n times f of a plus f of b what is f of a plus f of b this guy is f of a 
and this guy is f of b i'm just separating with one that does not have two and then other ha with have two okay that's what i'm going to do and then plus plus what do we get just distribute these to all these with two so you get b minus a over two n times i'm taking two out what do i get f of x1 plus f of x2 plus and then f of x n minus one okay so if i do that what do i get then so you get this is equals to so b minus a over 2n times f of a plus f of b okay so this is the formula we will be using later when we do uh, when we find out the uh, area when we approximate the area using the trapezoidal rule but what i want to show is I want to find that this sum will be equal to the integral, okay? So what I'm going to do is I cancel 2 and 2, okay? And then do b minus a over n is delta x, delta x times, this is summation of f of x i, right? So uh, k, uh, so you can write i equals to 1 to n, so i equals to 1 through n, right? and then f of xi so this can be written as let me write down that b minus a over twice n and then f of a plus f of b okay and then plus you can write summation i runs from one through n and then f of xi times delta xi or delta x because delta xi and delta x are the same thing so i'm denoting that by delta x i right so you can write delta x i there no problem because b minus a over n is delta x i now you get that now if you take n tends to infinity then this sum will be the remain sum right so this become what integral a to b f of x dx that's the remain sum you get right that part will be remain sum from calculus one but this one will be zero this one will be zero. Why? Because n tends to infinity. This will be a finite number. The top one will be a finite number. Bottom will be infinity. So this will be zero. So basically, that value, that value, okay? So that value is equal to the integral a to b f of x dx then. Okay? So what is the trapezoidal rule then? So the final trapezoid rule, trapezoid rule, rule, it's given like this you can write a to b f of x dx is equals to it is b minus a over 2 okay and then f of x 0 okay guys so f of x 0 and then uh, plus plus 2 f of x 1 plus and then continue and then plus 2 f of x n minus 1 and then plus f of x n. The first one and last one does not have two, okay? And then close that. So this is called trapezoid rule, okay, guys? So the integral or the area under the curve is equals to b minus a over two. b is that quantity, right? b is that quantity, a is that quantity. Oh, not two, n, b minus a over n, I'm sorry. So b minus a over n, okay? And then f of x zero is the first one, plus 2 times f of x1 is the second one, plus 2 times f of x2 and continue up to the second from the last. And then the last one will not have 2. So it is just f of x n. That's how we, that's what the formula we use for the trapezoid rule, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I want to uh, use, uh, I want to use trapezoid rule to find out some integral, okay? Suppose you don't know how to find the integral using the formula okay or the other formula that we learned so far so what i'm going to do is i want to use that trapezoid rule to approximate the integral and then you will see that how those two methods will work how right, so what which problem i want to do here is i want to do question number three from the book okay question number three from the book so question number three you want to use numerical integration to find out zero to two okay and then x square and then dx it says n equals to 4 meaning that you need to make 4 of the 
sob four of the uh, four of the trapezoids to uh, to to find out the area under that so how would that look i mean you don't need to make the draw the picture but if you draw the picture how would that look like this is like y equals to x square right so this is between 0 to 2 let's say this is 1 this is 2 so that is between 0 to 2 so you want to use this uh, you want to find out the area under that you want to find that area under that by using the four trapezoids so that means how do i make the four trapezoids one two three and then four right so you draw that okay and then drawing that with the trapezoid right if so you approximate that by the trapezoid and find the area but we don't need to make that so what we need to do is let us find out what is b so here b equals to uh, 2 a equals to 0 okay so n equals to 4 you see that so what is f of x f of x is what f of x is x square right so what are the x 0 x 1 so this is x 0 so x 0 is 0 so this is x 0 right so you can write x 0 is the left one right and the what will be x 1 x 1 will be so because we are dividing this into four so this is one this is 0.5 1.5 right you see that so you can basically find out that what will be the uh, what will be the b minus a over n then so that will be two minus zero over four that is one half so each of the trapezoid will, will be one half so x1 will be a plus uh, let's say delta x delta x that's how you find out so here you can basically do that where you can write that formula so basically where where x i can be found by x 0 plus so it will be n times uh, n times uh, delta x you can say that right because delta x is b minus a over n okay so you see this is x 0 x 1 will be x 0 plus 1 times uh, delta x right so that will be a times uh, a plus one times delta x will be what so it'll be zero plus uh, zero point five that will be zero point five what will be x2 x2 will be a plus two times you see that n times that's why two times because x2 oh, oh by the way this will be x n equals to or i should write like this i should write not x and x i equals to i times delta x okay so I can do I times delta X there. So I times delta X will be, if you take I equals to one, you will get X zero plus one times delta X I equals to X zero plus. So this is how you can find out all those. But for this one, it is easy to see from the figure how much is that. But if there are like many such uh, uh, rectangle or the trapezoid you, are, you, you need to use, then in that case, you will have to use that formula okay so what formula is that you have x of i equals to x 0 plus i times delta x that's what i am using x 0 is 0 x 1 is a plus 1 times delta x or x 0 is a there right so 1 times delta x so 2 times delta x that will be 0 plus 2 times 0 0.5 that will be how much 1 similarly x 3 will be 1.5 and then x 4 4 is basically 2 right so what is a to b f of x dx then that will be uh, b minus a over and I'm using that formula okay f at x 0 plus 2 f of x 1 plus 2 f of x 2 plus 2 f of x 3 plus f of x 4 because we have just the four of them right one two three four so the total is five terms you see that because x0 x1 x2 x3 so the first very first and the last one will have just by themselves and then the middle one will have times two okay so what is so therefore zero to two uh, x square dx will be b minus a is two minus zero over four and then what is f at x zero just because we have fx equals to what f of x equals to x x square right so i'm plugging in x zero x zero is what x zero is zero so zero is square will be zero plus two times f of x one x one f of x one x one is 0.5 right so plugging in here 0.5 square 0 0.5 square plus two times f of x two x two is one so one square plus 
2 times f of x3, x3 is 1.5 square, right? Because x3 is 1.5, f makes it square, right? It's just replace here, okay? And then uh, plus uh, f of x square, there is no 2 times, so it will be 2 square. You see that? Now, uh, if you use calculator, 2 over 4, you see that? That is 2 over 4. And then, uh, so 2 times, how much is that? 1 half square is 1 fourth plus 2 times 1 plus 2 times, this is 3 half square, right? That is 9 fourth plus 4. Okay, guys? So if you, if you use calculator to add that, you will get 11 over 4. That will be 2.75 approximately. So this is approximated value. This is approximated value. Okay, guys. Now, if you because this is easy function, right? To use, uh, to you can find out this manually. This is just an easy problem, right? So, in this case, if you want to find out directly using uh, the method that we know, how that look like? Then, let's see how that look like. If you want to find out directly, so it is zero to two x squared dx. Okay. So, what do you get? So, this will be x cubed over three zero to two. So, what do you get? That will be uh, 2 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. So what do you get? 2 cubed over 3 is 8 over 3. So 8 over 3 is what? It is 2.67. You see that? You see a little difference there? If you use the uh, numerical integration, it is approximately 2.75. And if you use the direct method that using the integration technique, you got 2.767, right? So they are a little bit different. <coughs> They are a little bit different. That means that difference is called the error of approximation. Okay, the difference between the exact integral value minus the approximated value with the trapezoid rule. You see that that is basically almost 0 point, uh, 0 0.08, right? So the error error is equals to uh, exact exactly this one minus approximated approximate that is exact is 2.67 right so 2.67 minus 2.75 that is the error is 0.08 so that is called the error of approximation okay so that is the exact value minus the approximated value okay now you see that if you increase the number of trapezoid like if you do like uh, 40 then you will be creating so many smaller trapezoid right if you increase that number of terms then this value will be approximately this value will be there will be more terms right there will be more terms there at that time so that will be almost 2.67 you will get uh, you will get 2.67 almost that if you increase the number of terms there number of trapezoid okay so that's what the trapezoid rule is. So uh, so the, the, the next thing we will be doing is a different method that is called the Simpson's rule, okay? And then we will also talk about finding the error. And then uh, uh, if you want to make the error very, very small, how many terms do you want to uh, take, okay? And so on. So actually on this example, I was saying like n equals to 40, that is too many times. If you Even if you do n equals to 10, you should be able to get almost 2.67, which is equal to the uh, exact value, okay? You can do almost that. But n equals to 40 will be bigger, I mean the better, but it will be more expensive, meaning it will have more work to do, okay? So in the next video, we will be talking about another method called Simpson rule. That rule will use a quadratic function to approximate the area under uh, under each of the trapezoid trapezoidal area or the under each each of the stripe. Okay, so uh, and then we will talk about how many terms do we need or how many uh, stripe do we need to um, to approximate the area to approximate the area under the curve so that the error is small give is smaller than the given error value. Okay, that's what we will talk about that. All right.